Uh, Nagla is the director of uh, Access to Knowledge for Development Center at the American University in Cairo. She's a faculty associate with the Berkman Center in Harvard and a member of the HUK Global Academy, a uh, lovely joint initiative in which uh, ourselves from the CTS are proud members as well. And Nagla, please take the floor. Thank you very much for um, inviting me. Um, I am going to talk about Egypt, and I will not specifically talk about copyright because access to knowledge is a fight we, or a, a pursuit we had started, but right now we have regressed quite a few years back. So allow me uh, to talk about the current moment in Egypt, and if I were to talk literally about the current moment in Egypt as we speak now, a referendum is being uh, held in Egypt that is flawed in content and context. So it is uh, quite a distressing image, so I am warning you, but I will end with a, a ray of hope. So uh, let me adjust. Uh, what I want to talk about is actually a persisting and continuing paradigm ever since the Mubarak era of dictatorship, hierarchy, authority that has only taken different forms, sometimes military uniform, sometimes currently a religious cloak, but we are living practically in the same regime. And we are also living in a, a culture and a philosophy of exclusion, of extreme polarization, of um, extreme division, which is precisely against the spirit and the values that we as a group here value of inclusion, openness, democracy, transparency, governance, access. So it is a very distressing moment indeed. Despite a ray of hope, and I will talk about that uh, in a while. So let me just take you uh, back. I have a few pictures. I don't have a, an official presentation, but a few pictures that I would like to share with you. So let me uh, take you um, a little bit back to uh, the times of Mubarak. And basically what we have witnessed during the 18 days, and we have chanted in the streets, bread, freedom, social justice, was against a hierarchical regime, a dictatorship, and uh, we were out there on the street risking our lives. Now, that was uh, basically a cry for real development. It was a cry of the masses reflected in street awareness of the complexity of human development as dignity, as active citizenry, beyond the mere false high rates of economic growth that the regime boasted at a time where we had extreme and merciless inequality, and of course, uh, a very harsh uh, stifling of freedom of expression. So the street actually expressed an enlightenment that the ruling elite uh, lacked or pretended to lack about the complexity of development as the pursuit of human dignity beyond false high rates of economic growth and the extreme neoliberal policies that the Mubarak regime followed. So it was a cry, it was a step against hierarchy. Then came, um, after Mubarak left, we had the Supreme Council of Armed Forces that I will commonly refer to as SCAF, so this is the army uh, ruling, and basically uh, everybody was, um, there was jubilation, everybody was happy, the common saying was the people and the army are one hand, everybody's excited, Mubarak is gone, you know, people were saluting the army, and there were those months in the beginning that was a, there was a ray of hope for the kind of pursuit that we were interested in. The civil society was being engaged. I myself was involved in a group drafting um, a new freedom of information law in collaboration between civil society and academia upon invitation by the cabinet. So we were very excited. Uh, there was also um, uh, activist, activists and civil society working on revising the communication law, the very same law that Mubarak used to uh, pull the kill switch on the internet earlier in, um, in during the 18 days. We had no internet, we had no mobile telephony, no text messaging for varying number of days, and the law allowed that. Mubarak's law allowed that. So uh, during those times, the, you know, the, the good times up until June, July 2011, we were engaged in this. There was efforts to revise the law, there was uh, drafting freedom of information, there was for heaven's sake, there was, we were working towards a, a strategy for free and open source adoption in the Egyptian government. So there was really um, a lot of positive things happening, thinking how we could enshrine uh, the right to knowledge, the right to information in the constitution, collaborating with Tunisian friends who had a head start on this. There was active engagement. It was a good time, openness, inclusion, but sadly that did not last very long. So later in 2011, people were out there again on the street, 
this time uh, holding banners saying no to military rules. It was an extreme setback on freedoms, and that took place gradually in the months to follow, and even uh, you know, during uh, 2011. So we had a, a crack on civil society. We had the workers' protests were ignored in the same way that Mubarak marginalized the less fortunate. We had a continuation of emergency law, military trials for civilians, police torture continues, attacks on the media, television station being closed, violently closed, um, exerting pressure on media content, uh, imposing a constitution uh, where there was a referendum on X number of articles and all of a sudden we are hit by a constitution that has more articles we never voted on, including an article that is actually Article 56, the declaration that giving SCAF the legitimacy as rulers of Egypt. They just remembered, you know, they should get some legitimacy as rulers of Egypt. And that was not subject to a referendum. Them. There was confusion, failure, politically and economically, and a hierarchy that is as authoritarian as ever. Again, top-down culture, uh, no uh, room for uh, participation of the masses. Most uh, painfully, there were uh, the women uh, had. Uh, there were the famous uh, virginity tests on women. So a continuation of the marginalization of uh, women. So all efforts to promote a policy of openness, inclusion, uh, were brought to disarray. Put on the back burner and we were set back to fighting for the basic rights. Then came Morsi, our current president, who, um, and the pie show, shows the results of the first elections and he got a lame 25% of the vote. Now in the reruns, I don't know if it shows, but that's the blue, uh, the blue part of the pie. In the reruns, he was um, getting a vote against Mubarak's man. So revolutionaries, swallowed it and actually voted for him to oust Mubarak's man. And he gets a 51%. That's the majority that he has now, but we said, you know, hey, that's democracy, we'll take it, we'll accept him, but he's by no means a popular leader. I mean, that's the kind of, of situation that we were in. So guess what? Economically, he follows a neoliberal, the exact, the brotherhood have the exact same policies as Mubarak, favoring an open economic freedom, the same asymmetry, the same schizophrenia, political stifling, economic freedoms for the big uh, players, and marginalization, continuation of the marginalization of the poor. Politically, exclusion like there has never been, a polarization like never before, this time more dangerously, wearing a religious cloak. That's very dangerous. So, um, what do we have now? We have a constitution right now that's being voted on that is very similar in, in the looks of Mubarak's constitution, but the details are much more stifling, gives dictatorial power to the leader, has much more religious uh, conservatism, but what people are protesting in the streets are, is not the religious conservatism as much as it is the, the dictatorship, the unending powers of the president. He continues to play around with constitutional declarations and uh, the state of, not to mentioned the state of uh, women. Uh, I want to show you, this is one of Mubarak's, uh, the people around Mubarak, and this lady, Shahira Maqlid, is a famous labor activist in Egypt, very well respected, and that's the kind of thing that she gets on the street when she chants, this is our country, this is just, not just your country, this is everybody's Egypt. Um, the polarization wearing on religious basis is very dangerous. We have not had that on the street. I share a picture of, uh, this was last year, and the common uh, thing that took place during the 18 days, but also during the protests against SCAF, was Christians t gathering to protect Muslims praying. That's a common finding in the square, you could see on the streets. Now, right now, what is happening is that people are being attacked for having a different religion or by simply Muslims. I was born into a Muslim family and not accepting uh, false piety, religious opportunism, and people are now labeled, which is a very, very dangerous game. Uh, what is also very serious is the cultural um, stiflement. Sadly, what we have had, uh, we have people are now talking about ban on uh, improper pornographic sites. And now, of course, you start that and there is no end to it uh, on what you can um, uh, block. There is a extreme crack on media. Uh, the um, Muslim Brotherhoods were actually surrounding 
surrounding the media city just a few days ago. Uh, there is a closure of TV stations. When the film Innocence of Muslims came out and this incredible response on the streets, the president never bothered to come out and sort of calm people and tell them, you know, take it easy, chill, this is just a, you know, a, a silly movie. So um, there is also a campaign against um, artists and actors. Uh, so, I mean, it is not such a great time, and um, really what, um, um, what is happening and what has been happening the past weeks, this is now a new area for protest. Tahrir is still alive, but this is the Etahadeya, which is the presidential palace. So you will see even it looks different. It's one a long street, but people are out on the, on the street again. Uh, we, we really find ourselves retreating at a time where we were hoping to push an agenda of openness and talk about new ventures. We are just stepping back to talk about the rights of women, to talk about the rights of minorities, uh, the right to development, the right to enjoy science and uh, to enjoy culture. So it's a very hard moment uh, for Egypt. There is exclusion, there is uh, division. It is actually same script, uh, different cast. And this picture uh, shows Egypt being abused perhaps previously by or only in the recent past by SCAF, but currently by our president and uh, his advisor, his religious advisor, and you will see the revolutionary suffering down uh, in the bottom. So what do we do? I mean, what is, it is a bleak picture, and I'm sorry to, to share it with you. I have goosebumps as I speak. But I think the challenge is to, to try and build institutions to take the democratic path. We have had weak institutions. And the only thing that has made sense over the past two years, or even before that, was the power of the street, the power of the people. You know, the, 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 it makes a difference, what people do, the brains, the efforts. I'm reminded by uh, Glenn's presentation, you know, I mean, just little things matter. People together work, but it has been happening on the street. There has been a role for the network public sphere, and there's a lot of hope for that. Online networks, but also offline networks, have been very active in all of this. So I think the challenge is how can we build democratic institutions, take the path as we, you know, the formation of democracy at a time where we are being uh, met by the harsh dictatorial top-down uh, pushing that has taken once, um, you know, a war uh, military, uh, military outfit, but now is wearing a very dangerous religious uh, cloak. So uh, what is the hope? Uh, I mean, if the Arab Spring has, so-called Arab Spring has turned into a very bleak Arab winter, winters do not last forever, so the cycle will change, and uh, the hope is that people have broken the barriers of fear. People have ownership of their country. You will find families having dinner, holding a constitutional draft, and discussing their articles on the side. I mean, this is an Egypt we have never seen. So hope is in this now. To what extent will this translate into building institutions, sustainable institutions, that will help the, the organic, ground-up, uh, uh, strive towards democracy actually per uh, prevail against pressures from the top-down culture of um, hierarchy, authority, and really totalitarian regimes. I have faith and hope that the current um, uh, false piety will actually uh, breed its own demise, and they are doing it as we speak. I mean, the way things have taken place and the way the president has acted has turned people against him tremendously. And I'm really sorry this is not portrayed in the Western media. The way CNN and, and BBC, and these are the ones I, I watch, so I don't mean to pinpoint them, has shown Morsi as the hero, establishing peace in Gaza and so on. I mean, the amount of opposition against him in Egypt as we speak is incredible. And it is not the opposition parties, it is the people on the street. The spirit, I'm telling you, I've been on the street for the past two years, and the spirit that is now on the street is, the, is one and the same as the, that that was out during the 18 days. But you know what? I'm not having high hopes on the referendum, and that's another story. There is, it is, um, I mean, it is a country where there are high percentages of the poor and the uneducated, and using religious harassment to tell people vote yes on the constitution to go to heaven is not an uncommon experience. So um, where, where does hope come from? Hope comes from the people and eventually, even if we live with some difficulties in the near future, hopefully efforts, the civil society is very strong, people on the streets, everybody is active on the streets, you know, people of all, from all walks of life, from all ages, everybody is out on the street trying to make a difference and the challenge is how can that translate into democratic, in, into institutions to have a proper democratic uh, path. So I hope that next year when we meet and I talk about the then current moment in Egypt, I'll have a, a better narrative to present more positive narrative. Thank you very much.